Hello, folks. Welcome to The Manly Show. I'm Jeff C., and it's hot, because we are all in the kitchen grilling today. I've got The Manly Gang across the nation grilling. Our special guest today is Chef Dennis Littley. He is having some connection issues, and he will pop in when he can. But we went ahead and go ahead and start the show. Uh, today's show is sponsored by the unofficial book on Hootsuite by our very own Mike Alton. So make sure you check that link, click on it, buy the book. There's a special going on right now through Father's Day, so go ahead and click on that and uh, help support Mike. That would be greatly appreciated. So what we're going to do, we're all going to kind of share some secrets and some recipes. I'm actually cooking, if you see the fire behind me on a gas grill, I'm going to be cooking steak and some boudin sausage which is a kind of a southern thing it's actually a rice sausage with uh, some pork in it and it's really really good and so I'll throw that on the grill and also some uh, brats and I'll show you how to do that in a minute so I'm gonna have the other guys go ahead and take off and uh, tell us what you're cooking how about you first Mike you there yep sorry I had to get the unmute <laughs> hey everybody I am cooking my famous secret Old Country Italian Minestrone, and it's secret because up until now I have not told Jeff, and he has asked me many times for this recipe. Uh, so you're going to hear it here first, folks. Um, That's awesome. You want me to go ahead and uh, throw that on there, Jeff, or are you you're going to go through the whole panel first? I'm going to go to the panel. I just want to know what you guys are cooking. So, Stefan, what are you cooking for us today? So I have my uh, I have a uh, chicken kebab made with a Greek. Um, Greek yogurt, Aleppo pepper, some lemon. Um, it's pretty delicious. My wife set it up. She sets it up. I knock it down. That's basically how we work, and we're, we're a good tag team. So uh, props to Lisa Hove Health and Fitness for this uh, great recipe. I put the link in the web on the event comments, but, uh, yeah, it's pretty good. And all I have to do, she gives me the easy part. Just grill it. <laughs> awesome. All right, Wade, what about you? Uh, hey, Jeff. Um, I'm going to be showing you guys how to cook a taco soup. This is one of my favorite uh, dishes because it's super quick to make, and it's it's really delicious, sort of a, a Mexican-style uh, flavor. So be happy to show it to you in just a minute. Gotcha. Well, I'm going to switch over, and we're going to try this because I've never done it before. We're going to switch over to my grill cam. I've got my grill cam. I actually cook on what is a, a, a Weber grill using charcoal. Um I usually, if I'm doing steak just by itself, I use chunk charcoal, but today, since I'll be doing some other stuff, I'm using uh, Kingsford briquettes, but chunk charcoal for me actually kind of uh, burns hotter and faster and sears the steak better. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this on the grill. Did I see that all right? Does that work for you? Yeah, it looks good. All right. And what I do is I, um, I stack them up to the side so I have a cool spot to go to. So I'll sear them over here, and it's stinking hot. Um, and uh, then I'll throw the steak on here in a minute. So, Mike, why don't you take it away and uh, show us what how, what you're kind of doing in your setup. Sure. Sounds good, Jeff. So everything I'm doing is on the stovetop over here. This is a traditional Italian recipe. One of the things that I've already done before, and I'm trying to show this to you guys, this is a pot full of uh, ground beef and ground Italian sausage that um, I didn't just brown it, um, I added some butter and after that had been uh, browned we had a little bit of milk and let that simmer through and then we had some wine. Uh, so this has been uh, simmered and sautéed in some Merlot. What kind of Merlot? Is that the kind of, just a regular Merlot, Mike? Yeah, you know, I actually I would prefer to use just an Italian wine, any old uh, Italian wine, but uh, when I went to our local grocery store last night I was really shocked at the lack of selection. Uh, so I used what I had. Then over here is a pot, and it's probably going to part me. I already have a wide selection of ingredients that I did before the show. I'm just going to start talking. First, we have uh, what's called the Trinity. We got white onion, and we have green peppers, grilled dice, and some carrots. And I also have a red onion. Gotcha. How long a prep does it usually take to get everything ready? It takes me about uh, 45 minutes to an hour to prep. And then as you're going to see, it, it's real fast to throw everything together. And then I just let it simmer all afternoon. The longer you let this go, the better the flavors are going to be. Normally, you let this soften a little bit and sweat, as they say. But I'm just going to throw everything together to save time. 
Well, I also have uh, some zucchini and some yellow squash. And I'll, uh, I'll put the actual ingredients in the event page later on for anyone who really wants this. Awesome. I have a big bowl of mushrooms, some black olives, some garbanzo beans, chickpeas, you can get those in a can. Then I have this big container of stewed tomatoes, diced tomatoes. That all goes in there like that. And one little can of tomato paste. Now, is this better like the second day? Is that one of those recipes that's better on the second day? Yeah, particularly if you haven't had a lot of time. Like if you're making this for dinner and you don't start it until 5, it's definitely going to be better the next day. So I usually, if I know I'm going to make this uh, for dinner, I'll start it around noon. Uh, so that way it's got four or five hours to simmer. Gotcha. So uh, how many does this serve, do your recipe typically serve? Um, this will serve 8 to 10 at one sitting. Okay. So I'm adding some garlic. You guys like garlic? Oh, yeah. You I'm garlic? There you go. Yeah? All right. Cool. Yeah. Go for it. Um, and then one of the other key ingredients, I like to have several different meats in this. Uh, so like I already mentioned, I've got ground beef and Italian sausage that I've already browned. I'm going to add that in a minute. But then I also have prosciutto here, which is a real thin Italian uh, sliced ham, almost like bacon. In fact, if you can't find this or if you don't want to use it because it's a little more expensive, you can use bacon. Gotcha. But I like the depth of flavor that using all those different ingredients gives me. What do you? What I do you was, uh, hang on, just I was I was uh, over here washing my uh, pan off, uh, Mike. Does that have cheese? Any kind of cheese in it? Not yet. Um, I do add fresh grated Parmesan cheese. Uh, when it's served, so usually we have that in a bowl um, next to uh, the servings of, of the soup. Cool. And I'm going to add some seasoning, and then I'm just going to stir this uh, for, like I said, four or five hours, uh, and let it really simmer, and let everything just kind of gel together. Hey, hey, Mike, what do you uh, what do you usually serve with it when you serve it at your um like a meal, do you serve bread or what do you what do you kind of yeah, do? I'm glad you asked because I've got uh, some bread right here uh, that I've been eating uh, and some nice red wine. Um, this is hearty enough to really be a meal in and of itself. Um, you know, so you wouldn't necessarily have to serve a lot of extra food with it. It really just depends. You might have some salad. Uh, you might have another dish or pasta. That would be pretty uh, common in Italy. Uh, this is. Technically, uh, a Sicilian recipe. So, th like I said, this is from old country, southern Italy. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, real quick, I'm going to go ahead and um, switch back to my camera. I'm going to go ahead and and throw the steak on. What I've done is I just oiled the grate with a, a little uh, cooking oil, and it's really sneaking hot. And so, it's usually for me. I've got um, right here, right here, a, a really nice. I think you can see it. A really nice uh, T-bone. I'm going to throw it on there in the hot part of the grill. And I usually put uh, the boudin kind of on the, on the soft, on the, I put it on the cool side. I also have broths in beer, butter, garlic, and onions. And I put it like right here on the grill to kind of sit there as a, in a hot tub and um, get good. And I'll take them out and brown them and I'll put them back in there. And the cool thing is, is those onions and garlic and everything caramelizes and then we have uh, stuff you can put on with the, the brats and the buns and stuff. It's just awesome. So anyway, that's what I'm doing right now. Um, Les, I just saw joined us. Tell me, tell me what you're what you're cooking today, Les. Oh, Les, you're muted. Just a second. He's muted. There you go, Les. Try it now. Well, still muted. I can't unmute. I can't unmute you. Unmute you, Les. You have to try and come back in. Okay, Wade, go to you. Let's go to you. Okay, what me. are you cooking, Wade? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, I have let me let me fix my here. I have already um, I've already uh, browned my meat here. It's uh, two pounds of uh, ground beef. You can get this at the store. What you do is you throw this in the the pan here and you brown it. And the most important part is after you get through browning it, you've got to 
uh, take it out and rinse it off. Rinse out your meat. Uh, that'll make you very sick, all that grease and stuff. And kind of rinse your pan out and just, once you do that, just put it right back in there. Now this is two. This is two pounds of uh, ground beef there, and the first thing I want to do is you got a, a can of Rotel. Ooh, Rotel. <laughs> there we go. You throw that in there. One can of Rotel. One can of uh, kidney beans. Put that all in there. Now it kind of it it starts to get a little full. But that's all right. And uh, this is, uh, sorry, this is the chili beans, one can of chili beans. And it costs, it costs about $15 to make this at the store. Well, let me mix this up just a little bit before I start getting too crowded. Could, there, could, could you actually maybe use a bigger pan? I'm just saying. I, I don't know. Sure, yeah, you, you could. You okay. This I was, is I was, I was, always fix it in. I was wanting to make sure there wasn't something special about the pan. All right, Wade, uh, I think Stefan needs to get stuff on the grill. Can you just stir that up and I'll go to him? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Stefan, take it away. Cool. So uh, we did all the hard parts this morning. I didn't really. Lisa did it. Um, you know, first thing this morning, she was marinating our chicken for us. We got uh, basically put everything, cubed it all up, cubed up chicken breast. Can you guys see that okay? Right. No. So, uh, cube them up, put it all, all, the whole recipe, put it all together with the Greek yogurt, the Aleppo pepper, lemon juice, um, I forget what else is in there, probably some garlic, everything's better with garlic. Let it sit for a while, and then we basically just picked up some skewers um, from the store and skewered them. And the thing with the, the only, the thing I gotta, I wanna remind everybody when you do kebabs, make them, make the pieces a little bit bigger than you might expect because they, uh, they tend to shrink when they cook. Um, but that's about it. So, you know, this way they don't get overcooked. And um, here, this is the real hard part, everybody. Just put it on the grill <laughs> and so, let it go for a while. Estefan, do you uh, do you soak your skewers before so they don't burn, or do you just put them in there? No, the the marinade's wet enough that I don't worry about it. I mean, the ends are going to get charred, but it's, they don't they don't catch fire or anything. We tried that in the beginning. I didn't really bother. Okay. How long do you cook them before you flip them? Well, I mean, it's chicken, so what, about 25, 30 minutes or so. I usually cover this up, though, so that it doesn't – it cooks faster and it stays a little juicier. Gotcha. So, yeah, hey, I'm, one the, I'm one of those guys that just, like, now I'll go inside. I'll come back later. I'll flip it. Then go back. But gotcha. uh, it works out good. Les, Les is with us. Les, what are you uh, – oh, my goodness, he's at the pool. Hey, Jeff. What are you doing? Hey, Les. Hey, yeah, I'm good. I'm, are you cooking? I'm, are you, I'm cooking. I'm waiting for you. I'm, I'm not cooking, baby. I'm, I'm having a beer in honor of you guys, and I'm in the pool uh, working on my tan. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. You can watch us cook and get hungry. Um, right Jeff, on. I'm, I'm going to cook trying. burgers. I'm going to cook burgers later, but uh, my wife had to leave. She won't be back until about six. So. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Well, I'm going to probably mute you, Glass, just because you're you're splashing. Do that. Uh, Okay. Hey, and and I think we've got uh, Chef Dennis actually in in here with us. Chef, are you yeah, are you how ready? you doing? Awesome. Hey, Chef, thanks for joining us. I'm sorry I'm late. Hey, we had one hellacious rainstorm here, and it kind of knocked everything out. But, gotcha. Uh, I'm back gotcha. online. So uh, I'm doing something pretty simple today, actually, and it's uh, something that's one of my wife's favorite dishes uh, to grill. And you know, I have my grill nice and hot. I've got everything heated. And uh, what I have is I've got some lobster, and I have some little four-ounce lobster tails, and I've uh, oiled, I've split them, I've oiled them up, and I've added. She loves Old Bay, so you know, Mama gets what Mama likes, and, uh, and I'm just going to put these on. And I leave the shell with them because the shell gets a really nice. I do pull them out of the shell first, and I'm just going to put a few of these on because she went out for a little while, so I'll cook the rest of them up when she gets home. But uh, I just kind of lay them out there. The shell uh, comes off, so you can 
so it won't stick. Because if you don't do it now, it's going to stick later, and you're going to have a heck of a time. And uh, the other favorite thing she loves is she loves grilled romaine. Oh, really? Yeah. So what I've done is I've oiled these, olive oil, salt, and pepper, and then these just go down on the grill, like so. And then we're just going to kind of wilt them. Now I'm going to turn that down a little because this is pretty hot, and I don't want them to get too crazy. And then I've got some peaches, and that's the, that's the last part of the meal for her that makes it like heaven, and that is a peach cut in half. And they're just going to go on the grill like so. Skin on them and everything. And we're just going to let this sit for a little while. Awesome. And now, how long, uh, I mean, do you put... Uh you put like ice cream in the peaches sometimes, or do you just eat them straight off the grill, or how do you do that? You know, I'm telling you, with ice cream, they would be fantastic. I mean, that'd be like really taking them over the top. Uh, most of the time, we don't. We just kind of eat them plain because they're just so good, uh, yeah. you know, like just like they are. When you get a nice peach and it's got some of those natural sugars and it caramelizes up a little bit, it just really, really is one of the best desserts you'll ever have, considering how simple it is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, one of the Chef, are those, are those Jersey peaches yet, or no? No, these we had Florida peaches for a while. You know, now I'm in Florida. I'm, I'm going to miss Jersey peaches a lot. Uh, the Florida peaches were really, really good, but they're pretty much done now. And these are Californias. Awesome, awesome. Hey, what, what's Wade doing? Because he's cheating and doing something to his pan and not explaining it to us. Yeah, Wade, t take. Sorry, we cut away from you. Tell us what's you what you're doing now. Okay, um, what I've done is I've just added. Uh, Black bean, can of black beans, uh, about a half a can of uh, corn, kernel corn, and a can of stewed tomatoes, a packet of ranch dressing mix, and uh, I cheated. You know those box dinners you can get for your tacos, and it and it has the taco seasoning in, in it, right? Uh, you can get taco seasoning, but I just cheated and pulled a packet out of one of those box dinners. And just throw it all this together. You you bought you paid for the box dinner first, right? Well, this was something my wife had. But what happens when she goes to make the dinner and there's no seasoning? Oh, I, I've already asked her if I could use it. So. Oh, okay. Just it's text. All, so basically, you just want to stir this up, and that's it's getting <laughs> kind of full. And and one thing that I I do want to tell you is now this is ground beef. You can also use two pounds of turkey meat, turkey ground beef, which is what my wife wants me to use. Um, but today, since she's not home, I have just went and got the real stuff. And uh, basically, you just sit that, you mix that all up, put your uh, top on it, and let it cook for 30 minutes on slow simmer. And it's ready to eat just like that. Really good. Wow. Awesome. Awesome. Um, Chef, Chef's lettuce is done already. Yeah. Oh yeah, that, the romaine really doesn't cook so much as it gets some nice marks on it. And then the whole secret to this salad is the Caesar dressing. And you know, you don't have to make your own, but if you want to buy a, a Caesar, you want one that's not mayonnaise, it's not white and creamy. And then you heat that dressing up a little bit. Get that dressing warm and then pour it over this. And it really it gets really spicy and flavorful. Put a little grated cheese on it, and you're you're good to go. Hey chef, have you ever had boudin before? Have, I'm sorry, what? Boudin sausage. It's a rice sausage that's here, and I never knew about it until I came to East Texas. No, I don't think I have. Oh, it's really good. I, I mean, it's right here. I don't know if you can see it, but uh, it's actually a it's it's made with pork and sausage. I mean, pork and rice. Uh, yeah. It's really really good. So uh, we always try to throw some on the grill when when we're uh, when we're cooking. And I'm actually cooking these steaks medium well because that's how my wife likes them. I like mine medium rare. Yeah, it so, should uh, move. Uh, my wife likes them rare, well well too. Yeah. All right, so Mike Alton, what's what's going on with you in your kitchen right now? <clears throat> Everything's just simmering right now. Okay. So I also oh. added uh, some beef stock. And okay. we end up adding a little bit of water, too, to make sure everything's nice and covered. you got plenty of soup. Um, and then I also added seasoning. I put in two bay leaves. Um, if you've ever used a bay leaf before, make sure when you're done cooking, you take the bay leaf out. You don't want to eat that. Um, and then I added basil, oregano, rosemary, parsley, salt, and pepper. Awesome. Awesome. 
So wait, tell us what where we are in your uh, witch's brew of uh, ingredients there. <laughs> uh, well, that's that's about it. That's all you do. You just you just let it simmer for thirty minutes after you just after you grant. Um, brown your your meat and just throw all the ingredients in there together and just put a lid on it and let it simmer for 30 minutes on low heat gotcha what's uh what what's the broth in it i didn't see what you, was there a oh yes that's right sorry i forgot to tell you about this this is a, a can of beef broth and you you use half of it there's you can get them there there are two cups in each container and you only need a cup awesome I'm going to go ahead and take my uh, my steak off. Um, one of the things that uh, is really good and uh, nice T-bone. Um, one of the things that I learned late is don't to cut into it right away, but to let it rest. Otherwise, all the juices run out all over your plate. So, for new for new cooks, you know, take any sort of meat and um, after you cook it, let it rest for a little bit. I mean that's that works well for me. So, Chef, I like what? Wait, I like to wait until you can start to see the juices actually like coming up on the top of the steak, and then it's like then then it's really sucked it all back in. Right, Chef. What would you say the, the thing is for uh, new cooks? Somebody who's scared to cook and doesn't want to cook. What's the what's the best way to to get them build up their confidence, and what should they start with? In terms of grilling or any kind? Just, just to cook. I mean, so some people I've talked about, they're just scared to cook at all. I, I think the easiest thing to learn really is just saute. It's, it's almost like a stir fry of some sort using different ingredients. Uh, I mean, I cook a lot of saute. And uh, once you learn to do that properly, and it's not difficult. I mean, you can feed yourself really, really well. I mean, you, you put things over pasta, you put things over rice, or you just eat them plain, and it can be a combination of proteins, vegetables, you know, whatever you like to eat. And I think the key to them being happy cooking is that they make things that they enjoy, not they make things just because they think they need to try it. I mean, you should always cook what you enjoy to cook, what you enjoy right. eating. Right. Well, that, I mean, we were giving way to our time, but um, the thing is, is... One of the it's, it's ease of use. I mean, just getting out there and, and cooking something like he did with you know five cans. That's still cooking and providing you know you're having a sit down meal with your family. That's still that's something. Right. You know that's, yeah, that's an important thing. You know you're putting something together. You didn't stop by the drive through. You know or just pop it in the microwave. So yeah, gotcha. Well, um, how's everything else going for everybody? I got it so it'll switch automatically because I don't want to burn my brats. So. I'm doing all right. Uh, I flipped my chickens over. I got a, I got a couple spots in the grill. I don't know if any of you guys run into this or have any advice, but a couple like not so hot spots in the grill, and uh, they seem to be always right in the middle. So I don't know really how to handle it. But any ideas? What do you guys do? Cook with fire. <laughs> that could work too. You cook with fire. Uh, do do you guys use um, in your um, gas grills, do you guys ever use those smoke boxes? Oh, those are cool. I don't have one. I do a lot of smoking. I have a big smoker down there, and, I, you know, the thing with me is those things are so hard to keep hot and keep, I mean, I don't want to get up every three hours in the middle of the night. And so what I've been doing is I put it in um, the oven and cook it just, you know, really low and slow, like at 220 all overnight. This is like for a, a pork butt. And then I take it off and finish it in the smoker. And you can't tell a difference. It's got a smoke ring on it and everything. And I know the old school guys are yell at me and blame me, but it works, man. If you don't want to stay up all night at the smoker, good night. Well, my mom does the opposite with um, with chicken a lot of times, especially if the weather looks iffy. She'll, get, she'll, she'll do the chicken, basically sear it on both sides, you know, kind of get it going. And then she'll take it off and throw it in the oven for a half hour. Or 20 minutes, or however long it takes. Same, actually, eggplant's good good for that too because eggplant tends to take a long time to cook. Yeah, that's a restaurant trick too. You know, we would throw things on, just get them pretty, get them marked really pretty, and then we finish them in the oven. There you go. So, um, what's your what's your absolute favorite thing to cook or grill? I mean, mine is probably steak, but I mean, I just it's just good. And uh, something about charcoal. I mean, I know. I'd love 
I've just never got a, a gas grill, but I just love the taste of charcoal. It makes things taste just even hot dogs for the kids. It's just so much better. But that's just me. What's your favorite thing, uh, Mike? Well, it's definitely Italian. In fact, this dish is probably one of my favorite dishes of all time. I've been making this since I was in high school uh, and decided I wanted to cook Italian. So I'm totally self-taught. My mom's from Germany, so she didn't teach me cooking and stuff. Um, I found some old books and studied. and I even studied Italian in college because I was really into it. So I enjoy it. Um, what about you, Stefan? What's your favorite? Favorite to cook or grill? Because... Uh, actually, it's a good, either one. It's kind of the same. I don't know. I, I really just uh, I enjoy doing these these kebabs. They're fun. They're easy. Um, and uh, I love that idea for the peaches, though, Chef. I, I may end up with a new favorite shortly. They're really good, and you know you can even put a little liqueur over them too when you serve them. Oh yeah. And if they're not real sweet when you get them, take some gra some uh, granulated sugar or either granulated brown or some sugar and sprinkle them. And just let them sit with that on it for a while, and that'll help help boost them a little bit. Because every now and then you get a peach, and this really is like these don't seem real juicy, and they're not hard. I mean, once you get them off, and I, and I always do both sides because the skin pretty much just peels off afterwards. So I mean, you can either take it off ahead of time or just kind of peel it off after it's after it's seared a little bit. Well, you know, I never thought about grilling romaine, but I there was a. I did a post yesterday of 18 things you'd never thought you could grill, and lettuce was one of them. And I mean, here's some even avocados, which I thought sounded really good, but I've never tried. Yeah, I saw that, Jeff. Um, you, there, uh, the image was grilling watermelon and all kinds of fruit. That was pretty neat. Yeah, I've never. I don't know. I, I've, I've never tried grilled watermelon. It may be awesome, but it just seems. Oh, it's delicious. Really? Yeah. Yeah, if you match it up with like some red onions and some um, cheese, like a little feta or something like that, you know, you really rock your world with it. That way too. Wow, it's looking good, Stefan. Thank you. Let me go back real quick before we, we we're getting close to the time to wrap it up, but I want to go back one more time to my grill because it is the manliest grill out there, um, and <laughs> show what it's what I've been doing is. Going back and forth, putting these uh, brats in the, this mixture of uh, butter, garlic, and onions, and uh, kind of going back and forth in that hot tub, and they're just oh, they're good. That's awesome. Yeah, and then you you know you flop on that onions on the on the bun when it's time to eat. So anyway, um, I want to let me switch back one more time. I want to make sure that everyone uh, knew about the special offer if you came in earlier, that the show is sponsored today by Mike Alton, our very own Mike Alton's new book, The Unofficial Book on Hootsuite, and there's a link in the in the comments where you can click on that, and there's a special, what is, is it Father's Day special, is that what you're calling it, Mike? Yeah. Uh, until uh, the end of Father's Day, so go ahead and grab that. Hootsuite is a great, great uh, social media tool that a lot of us use, and so check that book out because it's a great, great it's the best one out there, so check it yeah, out. Yeah, and I actually had the pleasure of actually standing over Mike Alton's shoulder when we met face to face to watch him as he just showed me how Hootsuite worked. I mean, he showed all kinds of things that just opened up new ideas and new doors and how to get content out there. I mean, I recommend this book. Mike Alton is is the Hootsuite pro, and I, I recommend that you get it. Awesome, okay. awesome. Hey, thanks everybody for cooking. Les, I'm sorry, I can't unmute you unmute you for some reason on an iPhone. It's just not letting me do it. So Les just looks awesome. He's been looking awesome the whole show. I took a little there he is, look at him. <laughs> I think he's drunk. <laughs> Hilarious. Uh, Les, thanks for joining in with us. Even though you didn't cook, you didn't need to cook. You got enough manliness for the rest of us. So uh, Chef, thank you so much for stopping by. Uh, hey, hold up your dish, will you, one more time? Here we go. Oh, that looks awesome. Yeah, that plated and everything. That looks great. So, everybody, hey, thanks so much for coming to the Manly Show, uh, Real Man Cook, and uh, we really appreciate you coming. Um, as always, uh, coming to the Manly Show, it's where the panel is wise, the guests are good looking, and hopefully your host was above average. We'll see you next time, everybody. Thanks. Hey, can you hear me now?